Good morning, parents. Welcome to our latest Monday morning meditation. Our passage this morning is Psalm chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. And it says there, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. Uh, like many of you, I have started uh, with Genesis chapter 1 in the beginning of the year, reading through it. And I was, I was, as I was thinking about Genesis chapter 1, uh, I thought about Psalm chapter 8, because uh, David really is following the same pattern of Psalm chapter 1, or of Genesis chapter 1, particularly verses 26 through 31. Because in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, it's talking about God creating man in his, in, in his image and then giving him dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. Psalm chapter 8 follows really that same pattern. We see David meditating on the fact that God has created man in his image out of the mouth of babes and infants, and then giving them dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. And so we want to, we want to think about and focus on here in this meditation, God creating man in his image and what that means. Even of course, babies and infants and well, if they're created image of God, what are they capable of? And as we'll see here, amazing things. Hopefully this will be, you know, a great encouragement for us as we begin the year with our children, uh, meditating on these are image bearers of God and they're capable of godliness. They're capable of perfecting the praise of God. We'll talk a little bit about what that means. So David opens up this Psalm with, O Lord, our Lord. So my God and our God, there's this claim on who he is. How majestic is your name in all the earth? How glorious is your name in all the earth? Uh, what this is saying is that uh, the goodness of God's name is seen in all the earth. This makes sense in light of creation. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1, as we see God uh, create, uh, doing, cre doing creation and, and separating the days. And after each day, it says, and it was good. So God has a good creation because He is good. So the goodness or the majesty of God's name is to be witnessed and seen in all the earth. And because we're image bearers of God, we can see it, right? We can look at creation and say, this is good because God is good. And that's what our response ought to be. And so then it goes on to say, you've set your glory above the heavens. So we see God's glory on earth, the goodness of creation on the earth, but we see it, of course, in the heavens. Uh, how much more in the heavens? Because, well, in the heavens are where the angels are, and the angels are created in a higher order than us. The, the heavens are where God is, but God's glory is even above the heavens. And so God's glory goes up high, and then we see in verse 2, it goes low as well, out of the mouth of babies and infants. So out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to steal the enemy and the avengers. Uh, well, what's being said here is that God is in the highest degree glorified when praise is perfected out of the mouth of babes and sucklings or infants, right? So uh, God is, God's uh, glory is most highly seen when children are praising God and worshiping God. Uh, why is this? Well, because he's created them in their image. And it says that they steal the enemy and the avenger or they silence the enemy and the avenger. And David would know this really well because as a boy, as a youth, he goes out and he fights Goliath and he declares to Goliath, you know, you come at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. What David is doing there is he is, uh, you know, he is establishing strength or praise is being perfected. Those are like synonymous things. Establishing strength, praise is being perfected because we're really only strong when we are praising God and acknowledging the power and the greatness of God. So that's what David is doing there. And it is, isn't it amazing, right, that, you know, all of Israel, all of the men of Israel who are there to fight in the battle, none of them are the ones who go out and, and fight Goliath, but it's the boy, it's the youth who goes out and fights him. It's, in other words, it's the boy who's exercising godliness. It's the boy who is imaging God well. Because, that's, because God has ordained it this way. God has prepared the, uh, praises 
to come out of the mouths and out of the lives of children, out of the lives of youth. We can even think about uh, Samuel, where it's out of all the people of Israel, God calls a little boy Samuel and he gives him the prophetic word. And isn't this amazing? Wow, it's like, well, God can work miraculous and amazing things through children, through youth. Uh, this is what this passage is declaring. And why is that so? Why, why does God do it through, th through them? Um, so that it will be evident to all that it's the power of God at work and not the power of man. So let me give you a quick example of this, right? Imagine it was Saul who goes out and fights Goliath and beats him. Well, Saul was taller than everyone else in Israel, most likely stronger than everyone else in Israel. He was the king. And if he went out and defeated Goliath, it would have been very tempting for all of Israel to think, oh, that's the power of man. But because it's a boy who's weak, right, who, who can't even carry the army, physically weak, when he goes out and defeats him, it is, becomes clear and evident, well, that's the power of God that has defeated the enemies of God. Right? So it becomes clear that only, the power of man cannot defeat the enemies of God. Only the power of God can defeat the enemies of God. And that's clearly evident when it takes place through the life of a child, through a youth. Right? So God manifests His glory through, through our youth, through our children. Right? Isn't that a glorious thing? God manifests His glory through our children. And so we ought to expect fruit when we teach faith. Right? When we're teaching our children the faith, we expect them to produce fruit and, and, and godliness and maturity. Uh, I had a parent come to me on Sunday and they, they, they came up with their 10-year-old uh, child and they asked if he could be a part of the Faith Foundations. And I know the child and I know that he's uh, pretty switched on towards the things of God and pretty switched on mine that he could probably comprehend most of it. And I thought it was great. I said, yeah, absolutely, you know, sign him up. You know, here's a child who's spiritually hungry and he wants to learn, he's hungry to learn. And you know what? He's been created in the image of God. He's capable, right? And what, what a great thing that he might uh, try to understand the deep things of God. And he's capable because he's created in God's image. And so are your children. Right? Your children are capable of understanding the deep things of God because they're created in the image of God. So sometimes they're gonna surprise us with the things they say and the wisdom and the insight, but it shouldn't be all that surprising. Well, why not? Because they're created in God's image. And we ought to respond when this happens, right? When our children uh, say things that are profound and deep, or they're exercising fruit and godliness, or they're being kind to their sibling, and it's like, whoa, they're, they're actually being kind and being thoughtful and, and serving them. Um, when that's actually happening, how ought we to respond? We ought to respond like David here in Psalm chapter 8. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have created them in your image. That's why they're doing it, right? So it's not because of because you or I are great parents that our children are doing it. And it's not because our ch children in themselves are great that they're doing it. But it's because through this meditation we see they've been created in God's image. And so... I hope this really encourages you this week. Your, your children are created in the image of God. God has prepared praise for children, right? God expects children to uh, have pearls of wisdom and to exercise godliness, right? And, and he, he's done all this because he is majestic. And so I hope this helps you in your faith this week, and I look forward to uh, continuing to build faith in families. God bless. Thank you.